Hello guys, Brad here again with another fragrance video. Today I want to do a video called Top 10 Reasons Not to Buy Vintage or Discontinued Fragrances. And uh, I'm sure we've all been down this road before. If you're a collector or a fragrance enthusiast like myself, you've probably been tempted or perhaps have purchased a vintage or discontinued fragrance for a large sum of money off of eBay, for example. In my case, the 2008 version of Dear M Sport, which some would argue is perhaps the best ginger citrus fragrance ever made. Or what about John Varvatos, Rock Volume 1? A great fragrance, perhaps the heaviest fragrance ever made, with its lead sheath around there and the uh, thick glass, you know, weighs about 80 pounds. But I thought it'd be fun to do a video where I talk about 10 things to think about before you go ahead and buy a discontinued or vintage fragrance. So let's start with number 10, stale or expired juice. If you buy a vintage or discontinued fragrance, guess what? The fragrance is probably not super fresh. It could be expired. Uh, when fragrances start to get old, if they're not stored well, they can lose their top nibs. Worst case scenario, they can start to smell like nail polish. How would you feel if you spent $300 on a vintage discontinued fragrance only to have it smell like nail polish when it arrives in your mailbox? Mm, something that wouldn't be too great. Not necessarily going to happen, but it's something that could happen. It's something to consider. Um, number nine, untrustworthy eBay sellers. Now, you remember that if you buy a new fragrance, you're going to be able to buy those fragrances from reputable stores and sellers. Sephora, Macy's, Fragrance Net. You get into the vintage discontinued fragrances, now you're looking at these eBay sellers. Maybe it's just some guy that has an eBay store, just happens to have a bottle of something for sale. Maybe it's not authentic. You know, with the kind of money that uh, they can ask for some of these fragrances, it's very tempting that it could be faked. You know, there's a lot of uh, money to be had selling something fake for $500 versus selling something fake for $50, right? So, yeah, that's something to consider and think about. Number eight, price gorging. Anytime a fragrance becomes discontinued or vintage, especially if it's hyped, the price is going to go way, way up. Now, remember, the buyer um, and the seller have an interesting relationship. The seller is going to base their price point on demand. The more demand, the higher the price. The lower the supply, higher the price. So uh, the only way this is going to change is if the buyer you know, uses a little bit of uh, discretion and uh, control and says, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to pay that kind of money. That should drive the prices down a little bit to the reasonable rates, but I don't think that's going to happen because there's always going to be somebody out there that's going to get caught up in this excitement and the hype and the psychology of vintage hype discontinuation. And they're going to pay whatever they ask for these bottles, and it's going to continue, and it's not a good thing for the buyer. Number seven, clone houses. Check into clone houses. There's a good chance that maybe some clone house out there has tried to recreate a discontinued or vintage fragrance maybe it's not exactly the same and maybe it's close enough that uh, saving a couple hundred bucks makes it worth your while at least check it out and see what you think in the same vein number six similar fragrances get a fragrantica they have uh, recommendations for fragrances that uh, are considered similar check those out and see what you think before you rush out and buy a, a vintage or discontinued fragrance number five and the possibility of reissue. This is something that could really be a pain in the butt. You know, you finally score that bottle of like pure malt from Terry Mugler, that uh, Suppressa de Toscana from Aqua de Parma's Blue Meta Toronto line. A couple weeks later, you find out the fragrance has been reissued, and now your bottle just lost a ton of value because nobody's going to want it. I mean, why spend $400 for something that's discontinued or vintage when you can get the reissue for? hundred dollars so you just kind of made a bad decision right there bad luck bad decision number four discontinuation hype fragrance reviewers hype fragrances all the time that are discontinued it's interesting how a fragrance that may have been considered 
average or mediocre when it was in mass production. Now all of a sudden that's just continued. Oh, now you have to have it. I think a good example was like DRM's O. Oh, I don't remember that fragrance getting a lot of hype when it come out now that it's discontinued. People are like, wow, you should really get that one in your collection. It's the great DRM hidden gem. Get that one. Yeah, right. For the price? Mm, I don't know. Uh, three. Ask yourself, why was a fragrance discontinued in the first place? There's a good reason why it was discontinued. Maybe the price was just... Uh, maybe the maybe the fragrance just wasn't selling. You know, people weren't buying it. And it was uh, costing the fragrance house money. Um, it's unlikely that a fragrance house is going to be like, Oh, you know, we've made five million dollars on this fragrance I think maybe it's time to stop producing it there has to be a reason lack of uh, sales maybe it's considered uh, outdated people weren't buying it uh, maybe the materials were hard to acquire regulations changed and they couldn't uh, make the fragrance because of that do some research try to find out why the fragrance is discontinued so you can make a smart decision as to why you really need that fragrance in your collection anymore number two Think about the value of a fragrance. Imagine if you had $1,000 to spend on a fragrance collection and you bought all these uh, cheapy but goody fragrances, cabinets and shelves full of fragrances. Then the other guy, $500 for uh, maybe the Victor and Rolf Antidote, $500 for the Dolce & Gabbana buy, man. Uh, side by side, the comparisons between the two collections don't add up, to, at least for most people might want to just <laughs> get away from those vintage discontinued ones uh, a bit and focus more on the cheaper ones. Number one, look for hidden gems. This is something that I always pride myself on with my fragrance journey. Lots of great fragrances. Nobody's talking about houses that people don't talk about. You can find great fragrances, discover them for yourself, smell amazing, and then be the only guy in town that has that fragrance, you know, and even knows about that fragrance. Instead of just buying what everybody else has and spending 10 times what it's worth. So those are just some thoughts about that. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment down below what you thought about my video. Do you agree? Is vintage and uh, just think of fragrances better off just out of the, the picture? Or should you try to buy some of these fragrances? And there might be some rare exceptions, but for the most part, maybe it's time to just let them go and move on to something else. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll talk to you guys later.